Well, good morning, Calvary. What a wonderful weekend we had celebrating e Jesus in his resurrection this Easter weekend. I hope that you were able to join us in person or online, and I hope that you were able to spend time reflecting back on the things that God has done for you. What I'm really saying is I hope you were able to see God at work in your life this weekend. And as we look back at the events of Easter as we have for the last month, we know that Jesus' death wasn't the end of the story. Also, the tomb was not a period, but rather a comma, knowing that the resurrection was coming. But the resurrection also was not the completion of the story, because following this, Jesus appeared to his disciples, to those that followed him in large crowds after his resurrection. And this is important because it's evidence we can look at to see that Jesus did, in fact, rise from that tomb. If there were just one or two people that said, yes, Jesus is alive, we've seen him, people may wonder, and even us today may wonder, how real this actually was. But Paul says in his letter to the church in Corinth that many people saw Jesus, even as many as 500 people at one time. But I want to look back at one moment in particular. In Luke chapter 24, it says that, that a couple of people were on the road to a town called Emmaus, and this is seven miles outside the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus appeared to them, and take a listen to what happens. Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 15, it says this. It says, while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation you are having with each other? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who doesn't know these things that have happened in these days? And he said to them, what things? And they said, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, of Nazareth, a man who is a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death, and how they crucified him. They continued talking, and in verse 25 we pick up, and Jesus said to them, O foolish ones, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer all these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in the scriptures all the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going, and he acted as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it's towards evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Now, this is a long reading for the word for the day. I get that. But this is an amazing event that I want to take a moment to look at as we celebrate Easter. As Jesus appears to them, but also walks through Moses, the prophets, and the rest of scripture and interprets it to them in light of his death and now his resurrection as well. But it begs the question of why did they not see and recognize Jesus at first? And there's much we could say on this. We could, we could spend a lot of time uh, unpacking this. But I think if we were to hone on one reality to take away from this, it's that we often struggle to see God in our life when our plan doesn't happen our way. See, the disciples were reeling from the confusion, the shock, and, and honestly, they were blinded from the loss of the dream that they may have had for themselves and for Jesus. They maybe each had their own version of what the future should look like, what Jesus would do, how they would benefit, how they would gain power and prestige from this. But none of their plans included Jesus dying on a cross. And I think that hard right-hand turn of this was so strong and so abrupt that it caused them to fail to see what was right in front of them. I think that we struggle in the same way. Maybe you've had this in the past where a dream, a desire, a plan of yours just didn't happen. Or maybe it's something even more tragic. Maybe you, like the disciples, are reeling with grief over the loss of a friend or family member this Easter season. See, just like the disciples, we can be tempted to think that Christ is absent in these moments. But be reminded that Jesus is walking alongside you just as much in those difficult times as he is in the glorious and triumphant times of life. And as the, Jesus, as the disciples walked with Jesus, they were able to see this. As Jesus explained to them the Bible, he wasn't doing this because they were clueless about the Bible, but because they could now see it in a new light. They could now see God at work in his redemptive history throughout time. And I bet you can do the same in your life. So let me challenge you this morning to reflect back on the past 
and look for how God has been at work, because I'm sure that you are able to see that now. And maybe if you're comfortable, type out some of the ways you've seen God at work in your past in the comments below. Share how God has been redeeming your story, maybe even a way you couldn't see at the time, but now you can look back on and praise him for how he was working and walking with you, even when you didn't see it. Thanks for joining us this morning. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.